Hey guys, Johnny Fair here for AudioTotsPlus.com. I've got a quick tip on how to simulate a wet, dry, wet guitar rig. Uh, wet, dry, wet is a concept that um, can kind of get you really great results. It, it, it creates a uh, really big sounding tone without a lot of work, or at least not a lot of work in Logic. In the real world, this concept takes a lot of equipment and a lot of routing, um, and a lot of really big boy, you know, Guitarists and professional musicians have used this technique for years, and it's kind of been a little bit of a secret weapon. So I'm going to show you how to kind of emulate it here. Uh, what I've done is I've created a new instrument track in Logic, and I'm just going to use the 70s metal rig that's already you know pre-built. Uh, you can find that in your library under electric guitar, complete rigs, and it should be under metal, and there it is, 70s metal right there. Cool. Our tone right now sounds like this. Kind of cool. Pretty dry, though, and that's the point. We want it to be nice and dry. No reverb, no delay, nothing. So what we want to do, though, is we want to create those things on auxiliary tracks. And to do that, we want to create a send off your instrument track to bus 1 and to bus 2. And let's send about negative 15 dB to those, give or take. Doesn't have to be perfect. And perfection kind of works in your favor on this. Okay. And let's rename auxiliary 1 to wet left and auxiliary 2 to wet right. Okay. Now, the tone will sound pretty much the same so far. <laughs> Nothing's really changed. Still kind of dry and kind of boring. So we want to create delays on these two tracks. So I'm going to use the, I'm going to go to inserts, and I'm going to use the mono tape delay. Oh, that's a stereo. Uh, you want to make sure that your auxiliaries actually are mono for this technique. So we want to click this little button down here and go to mono. I don't know what that button's called. It's just the little button. <laughs> okay, now we want to do inserts, delay, tape delay, and mono. And let's scoot that over there. And let's do it again on the wet right track. Okay, now we've got two delays going, but the problem is they're identical, so it should sound kind of boring still. Yeah, not much to that. So what we want to do is, uh, actually, first off, let's change the cutoffs. Um, you don't really want to send all of your signal to the delay. It'll get really muddy, and it just, it's just not going to sound too good. So let's change the low cut to 150 and the high cut to 2,000, and let's do that on both of these. 150, 2,000. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. Now we want to change the feedback because if you notice when you play that, it's kind of, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it just like repeats once and then that's it, you know. Almost sounds like you've just got another guitarist playing your part. We want to have that be a little bit more of a smooth fall off. So let's change the feedback to about 40% or so, maybe 43, somewhere around there. Let's try that again. Cool. Now it kind of, you know, actually echoes out. Next thing we want to do to get this a little more interesting is we want to pan our auxiliary tracks. Obviously we named wet left, so let's pan that pretty hard all the way to about negative 60, give or take. And the wet right, let's pan that to plus 60. There it goes right there. Okay, so let's try that and see what that sounds like. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. There's a little stereo separation there, but it's still a little bit... You know, not much going on. The way we make this sound really cool is you want the tracks to be different. You want your wet left and your wet right to have different timing or, or something different going on. For this purpose, we're just going to do, real simply, we're just going to change the timing of the delay. So I'm going to go to wet left here, and I'm going to use quarter notes on it, and we're going to keep this on eighth. At least I think that's quarter and eighth. Uh, so now let's try it, and it should sound pretty thick. <laughs> It's getting there. Not bad, not bad. Uh, you'll notice on shorter delays, you might want to change uh, your feedback up a little more so you can hear it. Like... Yeah, that actually was probably a little much. Let's go back a little bit. Okay, now the problem with this 
already that I can hear is that it's a little bit intense. Like, you know, that it, it would kind of sound like we're in like a glam rock band from the eighties. Not that that's a bad thing, but for now, let's kind of make it sound a little more polished, a little more professional. What makes this technique so great is instead of coming into your pure track here and, you know, jacking with it, uh, you can just control the volume of your auxiliary tracks. Uh, you do not, in my opinion, and there's obviously no rules, but you do not want to come in here and mess with your dry amount in your delays because what that'll do is kind of completely defy the point of sending these to an auxiliary track. You want to send everything to this, to, or uh, excuse me, everything to your auxiliary track, so you want it to be 100% wet, and then you just kind of control your volume from there. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so now that we've got those kind of knocked down a little bit, maybe it's negative seven, negative six, something around there. Now let's drive. <laughs> That's pretty much about it, you know. I mean, it, it, that was a kind of a quick, quick and dirty way to get a cool, professional-sounding delay set up for your guitar. Um, it, it allows you a lot of control, um, a lot of customization, and it's really not too difficult. And what's great about it being auxiliary tracks uh, is it's not extremely taxing on your system either. Um, so I guess that's about it. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, suggestions. Uh, put them in the comments below, and um, I guess I'll see you guys next time. All right, check you later.